Uh, greetings, greetings, everyone. It's Mr. Shaja here, and welcome to Back to Basics. Look, what we are doing now, basically, I want us to have a general understanding of what? Of our analytical geometry, right? And in order for us to understand analytical geometry, I think it is also important that we start with one of the fundamental things, right? Now, number one, under geometry, basically, we are going to be looking at, you know, your shapes, your line, and the relationships of the lines and their characteristics, right? We are going to be learning how to calculate the distance. And from your distance, we have this particular formula, which is given by what square root of x2 subtract x1 squared plus uh y2 subtract y1 squared not again so basically this is the formula that we use for our distance this is the formula that we use when you calculate gradient this is the formula that we use when you calculate midpoint and when they say they are looking for the equation right for the equation of your what of your straight line this is basically uh, the what this is basically the uh the formula that we use and now one thing that i want you to take note of is that also the gradient of lines that are parallel is going to be the same while the gradient of the lines that are perpendicular to each other uh, it's going to what the multiplication of both of those gradients are going to give you negative one right to get so basically these are some of the formulas that we are going to engage fully in as we proceed right so now let me just remove here let me just remove these particular formulas now and look at these diagram right now so from this particular diagram that you are having here let me just uh, make up my space here yes now from this particular diagram what is the first thing that uh you know right so from this checkbox here the first thing they say now, they want us to calculate what is going to be the gradient between A and also what between your A and also your B. So what is going to be the gradient in here? Remember, whenever you're looking for gradient, gradient, firstly, it is given by what uh, M, right? Which means you're going to the gradient of what of A, B is going to be your Y2 subtract your Y1 over your x2 subtract your x1 right and then now secondly what is going to be this now your y2 remember you can decide which one you want to make it your two and which one you might want to make it your one right so let's say for an example you make this to be your two and you make this to be your one which means this is going to what the y of a is going to be seven subtract the y of b is same as what it's same as negative three uh divide by now uh, for A, the X of A is 6, subtract the X of your B is going to be negative what? Negative 4. And when you do this, can you see that what you're going to get, this is going to be 10 over 10, which means your gradient here is going to be equals to 1. Are we together? And then now, secondly then, uh, now what is that you're going to look at now? Let's say now they are looking for the distance, right? Now, remember the distance is the length between two points, right? So now let's say we are looking for your distance. The distance that you are going to have here, uh, this is going to be same as your uh, distance. We are going to use the what? The distance formula. And the distance formula, remember it is given by what? The distance formula, it is given by square root of, this is going to be x2 subtract x1 squared plus, this is going to be y2 subtract y1 all squared, right? And what is going to be this? This is going to be the same as square root of. Now, let's look at the x2. Now, the x2 here, you can uh, still regard that one as x2, which means this is going to be 6 subtract negative 4 all squared. Plus, what is going to be this one? This is going to be same as uh, your what? This is same as your 7 subtract your negative 3. Right? And this is going to be what? Now, what is going to be then the distance from here? Now, what you're going to get here, this is same as uh, 6 subtract 4, which is same as what? This is same as your 10, right? Can you see this is going to be 10 squared plus 10 squared, right? And the answer that you're going to get here, this is going to be same as square root of your 200. Let's get, and uh, that's going to be a square root of your 200, uh, and then that's going to be a distance. And remember, for 100, the square root of 100, it is what? It is 
uh, uh, it is 10 and the other one is going to be 10, which means basically that's going to be the distance that you are going to have here. Now, number two, what else then now we can calculate from here? Now, what we are given here, the second question is, they want us to calculate the angle of theta, right? Remember, I want you to have an understanding with this, right? Remember that the line, each and every line consists of what we call the what? A gradient. And remember, the gradient tells us about the steepness or the gentleness of our slope of this line, right? So if they want us to calculate the angle of theta here, Basically, they want us to understand in terms of what is going to be the angle, what is going to be the angle of inclination, right? The angle of inclination uh, for what? For this particular line. And for us to deal with the angle of inclination, what is it that you're going to do? You're going to say, when you're looking for angle of inclination, you use the formula, tan of theta is equals to what is equals to m remember the theta represent an unknown angle and the m represents your gradient right so which means now firstly you need to have what is uh you need to have the gradient of this particular line and what is going to be the gradient of this particular line for an example when you're looking for the gradient of this particular line you are going to say look uh, my gradient that I have here, I've already calculated it to be 1. So which means my tan of theta, it is going to be close to 1 because my gradient is 1, right? And then now I'm going to transpose the tan of theta, which means my theta is going to be my shift tan of what? Shift tan of what? Uh, of 1. And the angle of inclination for shift tan of 1, you are going to get the angle as what? As 45 degrees, right? So, which means basically this angle here is going to be same as 45 degrees, right? And that's going to be your what? That's going to be your angle of inclination. Are you see that, right? Can you see that one? Hopefully this one now uh, makes sense to you now. Let's, uh, now. let's continue and see in terms of what else then are you given here. Now, next, what you are given now, they want us to examine or to find out what is going to be the equation of the line, right? And remember, we said the equation of the line basically gives us what? The equation of the straight line which you are given, right? So now, and remember, whenever you are looking for the equation of the straight line, use the, the formula y is equals to mx plus your c. And now what is going to be the y is equals to mx plus c? You are going to start by saying the m represents the gradient of the line. Do we have the gradient of the line? Yes, we've already calculated. So which means this is going to be same as y is equals to uh, the gradient. Remember, we said it's 1. Let me just substitute my x here. Plus what? Plus c. So that you can see in terms of what is the gradient that you are given, right? And then now, secondly, you are going to substitute a point one point between A and B that lies within the same straight line, right? So, for an example, let's say I substitute my point, what? My point A, which is going to be 6 and what? Which is going to be 6 and 7. And what is going to be the angle of, uh, what is going to be now uh, my uh, equation of this particular line? This is going to be same as my Y is going to be given by, what? The Y is going to be given by 7 is equals to, 1 into what is the value of the x that you are given here? The value of your x is same as your 6. Then this is plus c. You start by calculating the value of your c. And then now when you say 7 is equals to, when you say 1 multiplied by 6, what is going to 1 multiplied by 6? Same as 6 plus what? Plus c. Then you are going to transpose the 6, this particular sign. So this is 7 subtract 6 is equals to what is equals to c. Therefore, which means the value of our c is going to be given by what? It is going to be given by positive 1. So when I write the equation of this line, it's going to be same as uh, my x plus 1. That's going to be the equation of this particular line. What you get, right? So basically, these are some of the basic fundamentals uh, when it comes to analytical geometry, right? Which you are required to, uh, to have an understanding of this second example what is it that we are required here firstly they want us to what to find out what is going to be the gradient of a b 
And in order for us to find the gradient of AP, what is the first thing that you are going to do? You are going to say, look, my gradient of AP, it is going to be given by the formula y2 subtract y1 over x2 subtract x1, right? And what is going to be this one? Now, what is going to be y2? You can decide which one you want to make your y2. But let's say, for an example, we start with our 2 here. So can you see that this is going to be 2 subtract? Uh, this other one is going to be uh, 14. Can you see that? 2 subtract 14. And also, you're going to have 5 subtracts. What is it that you're having that side? Uh, as your value of your a, you are having negative 1. And the gradient that you are going to find here, it is going to be given by what? Remember, this is same as negative. Uh, this is going to be same as negative 12 uh, plus what? Uh, plus 6. Remember, this is negative and negative here, right? Negative and negative. So which means basically this is same as what? This is same as your what? Your negative 2, which is going to be your gradient. How to get? And then now, let's look at the second one. The second one is they want us to find out what is going to be the equation of A, B. Right? Uh, what is going, or rather, they say what is going to be the equation of the line parallel to A, B, passing through D. Right? So they are saying, if let's say now they can draw another line here, right? Let me just use this card. If they can draw another line here, let's say they draw it here, right? In such a way that it is parallel to this line, right? What is it that we can do to what to find out the equation of this particular line? How to get right? I know most of you you are thinking this might probably be this be difficult, which is not right. Number one, one thing that I want you to take note of is that the gradient of the lines that are parallel to each other it remains the same, right? So which means now basically the gradient of your line A B is going to be the same as the gradient of that particular uh, unknown side. How to get? So it's going to be the same as uh, this particular line at D. Let me just use uh, gradient at D. How to get? So basically that's going to be that, which means now the gradient of this particular uh, line is going to be same as what? It's going to be same as your negative 2 now. And now that we have the gradient, now the second thing that we can do now, we can then take any of this point and substitute but in this case we cannot take any of this point but rather we are going to only take point d remember because they say uh the equation of the line parallel to a p passing through what passing through d so how can you calculate that so in order for you to calculate that you are going to say look i uh the equation for straight line is y is equal to mx plus your c and the, create, uh, the y here, you are going to substitute the point, which is same as negative 3, and also your 3. And then what is going to be your y? Your y is going to be same as what? Your y is going to be same as your 3 is equal to negative 2 into what? Uh, into, your neg uh, into negative 3 plus c. Can you see that? And then now the negative and the negative are going to give us positive, right? So which means basically when you transpose them to this other side you'll still end up with what with negative six which is equals to c therefore right uh, your value or rather the equation of your uh this particular straight line is going to be given by negative two uh x this is going to what what is the answer that you got from here this is going to be same as negative three Let's get so basically that's going to be the answer that you are going to have for an equation that was parallel to your a b how to get now let's look at now the other question that you are given here so this one is very much straightforward let me just make up my space here so what they want here basically they want us to uh write down or to find out what is going to be the midpoint of what what is going to be at the midpoint of a b x1 this is going to be x1 plus your x2 divided by 2, right? And then the other one is going to be y1 plus y2, right? y1 plus y2 over your 2. How to get? So basically, that's 
are the equation that we use when we have to calculate our midpoint. Now, how can we start? We are going to say the midpoint that we are looking for is from the coordinate of A and also the coordinate of B. So now let's start here. What is going to be the x value of your A? The x value of your A is going to be negative 1. Plus, what is going to be the x value of your B is going to be 5, right? And this is divided by 2, which means this uh, answer that you are going to have here, it's going to be the same as negative 2, right? And now, let's look at this other one, though. Now, here you are having your y as what? As 14. Uh, and then the other y as what? As 2. And all of these are uh, going to be divided by what? It's going to be divided by 2. So now, what is it that you're going to get? When you say uh, 14 plus 2, you're getting what? You're getting 16. And uh, when you say 16 divided by 2, they are the coordinates that you're going to get here. It's going to be 8 and uh, what? Or rather, negative 2 and 8. How to get? So basically, that's what you are going to have here. 